All right, I got your question, and I apologize. I didn't even think our school has uh, classroom sets of graphing calculators, so I didn't even think about looking at this problem from that perspective. But what I'm going to use to show you that I'm dedicated to the idea of using a lousy calculator is the horrible Windows calculator. But you can still get the answer to this question that way. But what I'm going to do is look at it in the same fashion as the original question. I'm still going to treat this A uh, like a Y, and I guess I should change it from uh, white ink if it's going to go on and then I'm going to treat the D as an X. So it's going to be pi times X squared over 4. And what I'm going to do is create a table and then make a uh, sort of a makeshift graph. And I'm going to count each of these as 1. So my X's are just going to be 1, 2, 3, and 4. So on my table to match, and I change it back to white now, 1, 2, 3, and 4, that should give me a good look at what the answer is basically going to look like. It should tell me uh, how to eliminate some pretty quickly, I would hope. Uh, so the first thing that I'm going to do, or the next thing that I'm going to do, I should say, is I'm going to plug 1 in for my x. So when I do that, I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to count pi as 3.14. So 3.14, and I'm going to plug 1 in right here. So times 1, times 1 again, because 1 times 1 is 1 squared hit equal and then I'm just going to divide by 4 and it's going to give me 0.785 so I'm going to type uh, right in 0 0.785 uh, for my next one I'll plug in 2 there same type of thing general idea is the same except I'm going to do 2 times 2 which is 4 I should clear this out first right 4 times 3.14 and then I'll divide that by 4. So in my second spot, I'm going to put 3.14. So where I have 2, I should have another dot at 3.14 and build it up. And I'm going to check that one more time because I feel like I have some weird thing happened, but I realized it didn't because these 4s will cancel out and you'll just be left with pi. For my 3, which is probably the last one that I'll do before I start making a, my little makeshift graph, all I'm going to do is uh, 3 times 3 which is of course 9, and once again I'm taking this number, plugging it in right there, multiply by 3.14, and then divide by 4, and I get somewhere around 7. So I'm going to make my chart and get an idea if I can find a graph that sort of matches the general look of this graph, then I'm probably in the right place. So if I look at 1, which is, once again I changed color, sorry, at 1 I should look for something that crosses at about 0.78, so a little bit less than 1. This one's kind of in the general vicinity of the answer. Not great. This one's okay. This one might be all right, you know. This one seems a little bit low, so it's probably not that one. For my second one, I'll look at 3.14, so it's probably somewhere around 1, 2, 3, right in this general area. This one tends to go down, so it's not looking good. If it increases as I increase my x's, it means it's probably not going to be uh, a negative style graph, so this one's probably out. Uh, for the next one, this one seems a little low. Should be like right in here. It's probably not this one either. And this one is way too low because if I'm at uh, 2, it should be way up here and it's not. And I could check the last one, the 3 and 7.07. .07. So if I'm at 3, I'm going to go somewhere up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and maybe a little bit above. So it's reasonable to think that this is the general idea of what the graph looks like. So I can say pretty strongly that the answer to the question is F. So even if you don't have a fancy graphing calculator or no graphing calculator at all, you can still get the answer. The test is untimed anyway, so it doesn't really affect you in terms of having to do all the extra work. It's lame, but you know, whatever you got to do, you got to do. So, good luck on your test, and I hope this was helpful.